This is Windows 7. But how does it look like Windows Vista so much, you might ask? Well, because this is the earliest build of Windows 7 that you can download and install. Well, let's take a look at what's changed within this build, as well as how some of the features are still persist until the final release. First up, this setup. Even though it still bears the same look from Windows Vista, there's a watermark at the bottom right corner of the screen to let you know that this is a beta build of Windows 7 rather than Windows Vista. The Ayula in this build is still referencing itself as Windows Vista Service Pack 1. I'm assuming that the development of Windows 7 started as a fork from Windows Vista Service Pack 1. Now, looking at the OBE, it still looks the same as in Windows Vista. This applies to the Windows Experience Index as well. And no surprise, the login screen is just the same as in Windows Vista. So far, yeah, there's not much difference from this build to Windows Vista. When we enter the desktop, there is still the welcome center that spawns at every startup. And the sidebar is also well, still enabled by default. Then how is this different than Windows Vista? Well, by looking at the WinVer, obviously it still shows Windows Vista branding. And also the build string is different than Windows Vista. This build is actually the last build to still display the system RAM inside WinVer because as we see in later builds, it will disappear. And what about sidebar? Is that supposed to be changed to gadgets in Windows 7? Well, yeah, this is the last build to still include sidebar by default before being changed to gadget by the very next build. Moving along, by right-clicking this taskbar and clicking properties and going to the start menu tab, the options to choose classic start menu over the modern start menu have been disabled and hidden. Dang, I wish Microsoft still kept that classic start menu as a choice for future views and future versions of Windows. Opening Windows Explorer, the command bar's color gradient has been changed from Vista's green to blue gradient to this which looks bluer? I don't know how to say it. And moving the control panel, the option to display between classic control panel and category view in this task pane at the left has been removed and replaced by just the control panel icon. Instead, it's moved to the category view under the renamed All Control Panel Items. As for the view of all items, it has been changed from the large icons view to tile view. Indirectly, this user experience is staying until the final release, although it's not the same procedure as this view does. We got two small changes that can be seen if you are thorough enough. First, PowerShell which is an optional application that can be installed in Windows XP and Vista, which is now included by default starting from this build. The second one you can get is by opening MS Config and going to the boot tab and also checking the no GUI boot. When you restart the OS, the screen will show you the sketchy type of drawing of number 7 behind the Windows logo. Now I see how Microsoft is already defining the next version of Windows name as Windows 7. As you probably know or may not know, in beta builds of Windows 7, Windows 8, and loosely similar with Windows 10 and 11, there is a lockdown procedure that hides certain features from the public that are intended only for Microsoft's internal usage. I mean, these views aren't intended to be leaked anyway. As for this build, there's not much tight procedure to unlock some features because it can be done with just registry tweaks. The first one is Superbar. By setting the can has Superbar the word 32-bit value to 1 inside the taskband key, you can get an early implementation of how Windows 7's taskbar is supposed to be. The look is still quite primitive as this is just for proof of concept. But you can see that there's one feature that has already been implemented in here, which is combined applications within the group. But apart from that, core features of Superbar or Taskbar in general haven't been implemented yet, like dragging applications as well as pinning apps. The second and final feature from this procedure is libraries. Anyone? 
Anyone use libraries? Tell me in the comments. This is actually first implemented in Lord, but cancelled due to WinFS's instability. Correct me if I'm wrong. By setting the value to use Win7F pane to one within the advance key in this part in RegEdit, opening a new Windows Explorer instance now will show a new option named Show Libraries. It will only list out two things documents, a dummy libraries just to know if the features working properly, and libraries, which sh will show a dialog to add a new one. But unfortunately, it doesn't do anything after you finish with the dialog. Well, it doesn't add any other libraries. Yeah, I get it. This is still a very early build of Windows 7. There are still places within the OS that still looks familiar to Vista. But once you get to later build, you will see changes that are going to take shape for the feature versions of Windows. But I also think, what about...